uh, the time. Short turnaround, obviously, and uh, getting ready for the draft. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Doug here. Brief, and then I can take your questions. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm heading to uh, the Board of Governors meeting, which I'll get updated on, obviously, several issues there. And then off to uh, the draft, and then uh, after that, we have our development camp. So um, okay. look forward to answering whatever questions you may have this morning. So fire away if you'd like. What positive impact will the draft have for the team? Thank you. Oh, well, you know, the draft is always its one way of adding players to our system, and uh, whether it be through, uh, through trades, we actually made a trade today acquiring a really good young player, whether we acquire players through uh, free agency, which is how we acquire the Donskoys and Carlsons and Heath and Sorensons and, uh, and players like that. But any time you have a chance to add uh, a player through the draft, we certainly do that. Uh, the majority of players we've added the last couple of years have come through the draft. Our scouts have done an excellent job and also an opportunity to talk to a lot of other teams and explore uh, other potential ways of, uh, of having players come here. But uh, the draft has always been important to us. Hey guys, I apologize. I should have mentioned that right off the top of the call that, that the deal was just announced as we started this conference call. So hopefully uh, it's come through to you uh, the email. But just to, uh, to confirm, this is Sharks acquired center prospect Maxim Latunov and Arizona's sixth round pick in 2017 in exchange for San Jose's fourth round pick this year, 2016, and a third round selection next year in 2017, which was previously acquired from Detroit. Right. Uh, Thank you, John, um, first, is that anything you can tell about um, what you like about him? And also, just looking back at the finals and how that went, do you think you guys need more speed on your team, or is that something you're looking to have this, this summer? Well, first of all, Max Latunov is a player that our amateur guys identified in his draft year. He was one of the top, uh, top offensive guys as a freshman at UConn, uh, center position. And we've had pretty good luck in acquiring players that have been drafted by prior teams. He was originally drafted in the second round by St. Louis and then uh, moved in a deal to Arizona. But uh, much like uh, Don Scoy and Carlson, uh, we've identified these types of players. And Max, I uh, just got off the phone. Him. He's excited to be here. We think he's a great fit. Uh, we're going to get him bigger and stronger as he progresses through his college uh, career. But he's just really a, a player that we've identified that uh, fits our needs going forward. Uh, the other part of your question, sorry, I, didn't, I couldn't hear it. Uh, looking back to the finals, do you think speed is an element you guys need to add this offseason, or are you happy with it? you guys are happy with that? Well, when you take a look at the 37 players we've added to this team over the last couple of years, the majority of them are uh, skilled speed players and uh, the ability to play quick, so they'll be coming in to compete. Uh, but I'll also say that we have one of the best teams in the league this year on the road and could go in and play against any teams in any style. Um, and I think that... Uh, our team, extremely proud of them. They left every drop in the bucket. They uh, they left it all out there. Uh, but much like Pittsburgh, I'm sure uh, Pittsburgh was dealing with some guys that uh, might have been dinged up a little bit, as were we. But when you look at some of the players that uh, you know we have, uh, you know, Tomas Schertl not being the lineup impacted us. And impacted actually a couple of lines and uh, the Matty Nietos of the world and some of the other guys. But some of the young guys coming, the Timo Myers, the uh, Goldovans, the... Uh, um, uh, the Sorensons, these are all speed players, so we think we have a lot of ingredients in-house that are going to compete for this team, but uh, we think we can play a fast game too, and, and we did it many times during the season when we are healthy and on top of our game. Hey, Doug, Ross. Yeah, but... Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, Doug, Doug, it's Ross with you in here. One quick thing to clarify. Just to finish the last part of it, you obviously have to play many different ways against many different teams, and you have to have a multitude of, uh, of ingredients to get by the L.A.s and St. Louis's and then play different teams. So we've always tried to have all the different uh, looks uh, that Pete and our coach wanted. Sorry, Rossi, I, I can barely hear you guys sometimes here, so go ahead. Oh, okay, sure, no problem. Uh, one quick thing to clarify. You dealt the fourth round pick today. Was that the 111th pick or the 120th? Uh, it was the 120th, which is the last pick in that round. Okay, and then two follow-up questions for you. Uh, that bridge of five picks coming up starting Friday. What yep. is the likelihood of you acquiring more picks? And then what's the challenge of 
you know, having to wait till 60, something you haven't had to do lately. Well, you know, the reason we're we're waiting at 60 is I think we uh, used our first round pick for a pretty good player in Mark Jones. So I think we'll, we're okay with that. Um, and as I say, we've acquired a lot of players in the last couple of years and replenished our whole system. So we have, uh, uh, you know, this is the year if we do come out of it with five picks, uh, I'm okay. And uh, but we've also been pretty successful in that area in the second round, whether it be the, the Chris Tierney's, who I think we drafted at 55th, the Mark Edward Vlasics, and we'll continue to add more players to our system. Uh, but right now we're pretty flush and pretty deep and excited about the, the players we already have coming in. And... Um, uh, you know, there's, I think, a group of players that we've signed as, as free agents, too, that have really complemented our, uh, the depth of our organization. And we'll, we'll continue to do that. So this is David Paul here for Old Time Stick. How are you? <laughs> uh, quick question. When, you, when the team had as much success as it did in the playoffs this year, did that change your mindset at all over the summer as far as the, the caps and the flies they had? No, I think that the key thing is to get the players, uh, you know, to play this deep and is to get them healthy over the summer. And, uh, you know, it's, um, I think our players are really excited to build on what they accomplished this year. Came into this season with high expectations, and uh, certainly the players we added enhanced that, but make no mistake about it, the guys, the core guys that were here really stepped up in a big way. A lot of the young guys stepped up in a big way. Our older guys played as uh, younger players, and our younger players players played as older players, so it was really a, uh, a very contagious environment, and as I said, I think the coaching staff did an excellent job, but the players are still stinging a little bit, uh, as they should be, but they're already talking about uh, the excitement of next year, and uh, we think we have a lot of really good ingredients uh, in that room, the young guys coming in to compete, and, and some guys also that we, uh, that we potentially may add. Doug, well, you're going to get some more information, obviously, before a governor's meeting regarding expansion and the cap. Is there any scope on or what can you share in terms, without knowing those rules yet, just is there an anticipation of this draft? Maybe we're going to see a number of moves, or more moves than we normally see deals struck, whatnot. Is there what kind of scuttle about this there? Well, I think, um, you know, as, as I said, the Board of Governors meeting will have that all clarified for us. We're positioned extremely well, both for the expansion drafts uh, with where our players are at and contractual commitments. We're also, uh, I think, very well uh, uh, placed for whatever the cap could be for both now and the future. Uh, we, we kind of planned that getting to this point, but we think we have a lot of flexibility, a lot of coverage, and uh, a lot of, in, as I say, young players coming to our system. Uh, in anticipation of the expansion and where the cap could uh, could maintain itself. Do, do you have positions of emphasis going into this draft and do you look more at best player available early uh, with only two picks in the first four rounds? Or are you, and then maybe positions later or you know, what's your sort of mindset going in? Well, we always think that, you know, the best player available, you always take a look at where the game is at, where it's going, and players that kind of fit. And uh, whether it be a drafted player, whether it be a player that we acquired through trade like a Martin Jones, he fits for now in the future. Even the Don Scrays and Carlson's and Lawrence's and he's they fit with how we want to play. So we're always, uh, you know, looking for the best player, but it's the uh, the character, their style of play, and how they'll fit in and integrate with this organization. And, uh, uh, I can't stress enough how important it was to bring the Barracuda out here and uh, the ability for a lot of the young players to play there uh, next year uh, with their eligibility and to continue to write them, just like Mirko Mueller and uh, Goldovin did this year. Uh, it really uh, is a good way to monitor their development, let them see how close they are and uh, how important they are to us.